It's Friday. Okay guys, I'm at the Civic Center tonight and I am going to see a comedy show. And I've seen this guy in uh, person before. His name is James Mullinger. He's not a very good looking guy, but nevertheless, he's here and he's willing to give us a little bit of a shout out. So James, how you doing? I'm very good, thank you. I am honored to be on your vlog. As you know, I'm a big fan of yours and the work that you do here in St. Stephen in both capacities, so uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Hit me, hit me with your best shot. Yeah, there you go. So. Guys, James Mullinger, he's going to be here live at the Civic Center tonight. Uh, I'll post a link down below so you can get a hold of his schedule, find out where he is, and laugh your ass off. Thanks a lot, guys. Hey, stick around, guys. Why don't we just keep filming, film the old gig, then you don't need to come and bother seeing me live. Win-win. Happy days. But you don't make any money that way. That's true. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Come to a show. I promise it'll be good. I'll be back in St. Stephen soon. It's my favorite place. Look, I've actually eaten two boxes of Ganon chocolates. That is how much I love Charlotte County. Perfect. See you guys. Now I'm not a big man. <laughs> you obviously have a huge, I can tell you have a huge man. <laughs> very, very sexy man. <laughs> I mean, it is. It's beautiful. I mean, that, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I mean, I'm not gay, but then I'm not vegetarian either. Uh, it takes longer to become a New Brunswicker. I want to drive a four-wheeler on a highway. <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> I want to know how my truck handles on hiking trails. <laughs> I want to wear head-to-toe camouflage just to go to Tim Hortons. <laughs> Today is Saturday. It's supposed to be a real sunny day. Got my t-shirt on, got my ball cap on. We're gonna go work out in the yard. Please, Mother Nature, make up your freaking mind. <sighs> okay guys, it is Saturday and we are about to tackle the dynamat in the old Chrysler Cordoba. So first thing that I've got to do is give the floor a vacuum and give it a wipe down, get rid of some residual dust that might be laying around so everything can stick. About an hour ago, I brought a heater out and put it in the car with the windows up in hopes that it would heat the metal floor of the car up enough so that this Dynamat uh, product will stick to it. And so far it seems to be okay although the inside of the garage still is cold so I'm going to crank the heater uh, in the garage as well and we'll see what happens. So first things first, we got to get it vacuumed out. And now all we're going to use is just some multi-purpose cleaner and we're going to wipe down the surface, get rid of any fine dust that might be laying around there. I realized I was going to need a seat or something to sit on. I didn't want to sit on the cold concrete. And then I realized I had bought one of those little rolling stools with the height adjusting seat on it. And I couldn't find it. Typical of anything in this garage. Even after I cleaned it out. So I did find it. It was kind of up on, on the shelf over there. And uh, it was kind of blended in with everything. So first, before we could even start doing this project, we've got to assemble our seat. Okay, so now that we got the seat put together, the floor is clean, and hopefully it's warm enough for this stuff here to stick to. So, what I'm finding so far is that the temperature has to be a heck of a lot warmer than what it is right now. 
this Dynamat stuff is, is still pretty stiff because it's been sitting in the garage. And the floor, I mean, although it's not cold, <clears throat> it certainly isn't warm to the touch, which is, I think, what we probably will have to have in order for this stuff to stick properly. Uh, it doesn't help that the little roller that they give you is something that you'd find at the dollar store, likely, and fell apart within the first two or three rolls. So we're going to have to find something a little bit better than this and take this project up another day. Well guys, not all is lost today as far as projects go. I did show you in one of my previous videos that I had a little modification to do with the old car and it is in this box. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce you to the Power Blast Plate by Thompson Performance. So I do a fair amount of dream shopping on places like Summit and Jigs and all these different places. And out of the corner of the screen one day, I saw this advertisement for what Thompson Performance calls the Power Blast Plate. And the theory behind this Power Blast, it's a tongue twister, this Power Blast Plate is that it, when you insert this into your carburetor, it is supposed to help atomize the fuel better to make your carburetor more responsive. Now, normally when I see things like that, I think to myself, yeah, right, this has got to be some sort of a, just a you know, gimmick or what have you. So I followed the link, clicked on their website, and watched some of these, um, some of these videos on, on their product on different types of carburetors. So again, you have to take that with a little, little bit of grain of salt because if you just listen to what the manufacturer is saying, um, then what tends to happen is you get a biased opinion and you know you, you're only seeing one side of it. So I started doing some research on YouTube and I encourage you to do the same thing and when I found this product being advertised by people who were not uh, paid endorsements uh, by this company, this uh, Thompson Performance, I realized that the product itself in theory makes sense and they were showing a top-down view of uh, before and after this power blast plate inside the carburetor and there is a noticeable difference on how the fuel comes out of the jets and uh, and how it uh, how it atomizes uh, in your carburetor so today I'm going to install one of these and before I go any further this is not a paid advertisement or paid endorsement I'm taking a chance here this sucker cost me about 40 bucks and we're hoping that 40 bucks is is 40 bucks well spent if it does work great we hope to see a major improvement on how this carburetor reacts to this plate. Uh, if it doesn't work, at the end of the day, I'm only out 40 bucks. Uh, we'll see how it works. So let's get started. We'll install it on the 79 Cordova. The carburetor that I have is just a standard Edelbrock 600 carb. Uh, it does have the electric choke and it is a four barrel. So let's get to it. So here is my Edelbrock 600 carburetor, uh, part number is a 1406 and uh, we are about to install this power blast plate. So this is the power blast plate and we'll show you where it goes. So I'm not sure if you can see in there the jets which are those two little pointy things and then two screws right in behind that plate. And those two screws is where the power blast plate will screw onto. We've got to get the carburetor apart. So the right way to do this, obviously, would be to take the carburetor off and do it on the bench. And I'm feeling a little bit crazy, and I'm going to take it apart right on the car because I feel like dropping screws down into the engine. No, we are not taking the carburetor apart on the motor. We are going to take it over to the bench and do it that way. Oops, forgot the ground. We do have to be careful with this because there is still gas in the carburetor. I'm going to do my best to try and not get it all over the place here. So the first thing we have to do is we have to split the carburetor here, which means we've got to take all these torques out and remove the linkage from the throttle plate. So 
So we've got the two pieces of the carburetor apart and as I took things apart I then realized just how dirty things were inside this carburetor. Let me show you. All that brown in there, that's all dirt on both sides. So we're going to dump that gas out and we'll clean that up while we've got this apart. So with all the gas going out of there, you can see just how much crud builds up in there. That's pretty disgusting. As you can see, there's not a whole lot to this. But again, the theory is is that when the gas comes out of these two little jets here that it hits the back of the plate just like that and helps atomize the fuel better than the way the carburetor was initially meant to be used so let's get this thing back together Sounds pretty good to me, but this car always does. That is the Power Blast plate installed in a 600 CFM carburetor from Edelbrock. Uh, wasn't that big of a job, but we did get the opportunity to get in there and get that cleaned up while we had the part. So we won't know how it works until we can get out on the road and uh, see what kind of performance this thing has over what it had before. And could it be just because we cleaned the carburetor? Could very well be. But I'm optimistic. And if you guys are interested in the Power Blast plate from Thompson Performance, I will put the link in the description below and you guys can check it out for yourself. Guys, it's been a blast getting this project done today. I'm glad that we finally got it behind us. I uh, wish we could have got some more done on the Dynamat, but we'll have to wait for warmer temperatures. But until then guys, if you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see some more videos, check out the box right beside me. And I hope that you guys will press that subscribe button and press the little bell beside it so that you get notified when I upload a new video. Guys, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next upload.